All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we're continuing measurement, data display, and interpretation with interpret graph data. With C11, we're going to cover the very basics of visual analysis, including, including trend, variability, and level. These are the things you're going to start looking for as you analyze data, and you're going to analyze data through graphs using visual analysis. It's so one of the big advantages of how we interpret data in ABA is visual analysis is quick, it's easy to perform and easy to explain for stakeholders. Does it have flaws? Of course, but all sort of analyses will have flaws. For us, it's a good system because it keeps it very simple, allows us to make quick decisions and explain why we're making why we are making those decisions. As always, please like and subscribe so you can get all of our video updates, including the continuation of this series. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. That link is in the comments below. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So let's think about data-based decisions. And when we are making data-based decisions, we are using our graphs to make those decisions. It's much easier to look at some sort of data path than it is to look at a bunch of numbers. Because if you have a long session with a lot of data points, especially if you're working on the same couple programs, looking at those numbers is going to take a lot of time. Whereas if we graph them, it's very easy to get an idea of what way the direction is going, how has it changed recently, is the variability, so on and so forth. So that's why we graph everything, and that's why we use visual analysis. We make decisions based on what the graphs show, and we can also explain to the stakeholders using these graphs. We can look at levels, trends, and variability quickly and make it make sense to even naive observers and stakeholders. How you interpret your data will help determine effectiveness, efficiency, and what to do moving forward with your intervention. So let's talk quickly about not necessarily a negative of visual analysis, but something we've got to keep in mind. Visual analysis is much more subjective than, let's say, a statistical analysis where you enter something into a computer or formula and it spits out a solution. Visual analysis, five different people looking at a graph may agree or disagree on, let's say, the variability of the outcome. So you've got to keep in mind your biases, your background, and what you're trying to accomplish when you do perform visual analyses, because there is a subjectivity to this practice. Let's start with level. Level refers to the value of the behavior on the y-axis where data converges how high or how low the data points are. In other words, if we look at our first graph here, number one, our level is going to be here and here. All the, the, the values or the, where the data converges is going to be right here in the middle. And we're going to talk about some of the shortcomings of the level in a second. But if you quickly just look at this using visual analysis, it appears our level has changed from condition A to condition B. And depending on our goals or what we're trying to accomplish, maybe that's a good thing, maybe it's a bad thing. Maybe we're being a little misled by what that level says. Now, change in level can be determined in condition by the difference between the first and last data point on the Y axis. That's a quick way to do it. Uh, Cooper also recommends doing the first three data points and the last three data points, which might give you a more holistic view of things with changes in conditions you can look at this level line and see how it changed and there's a couple different ways to do a level line uh, there's a mean level line where we're just taking the averages of our data which is what's happening here in the second graph and there's also a median level line where we're taking the median and drawing a line that way now level lines can represent typical performance, and they often do. So if we're looking at an average, it's more or less our typical performance. But we got to be careful about using them for increasing or decreasing performance. And why is that? Well, if you look at graph two, our level again has gone up. 
Look at our data path. If our response measure in condition A is shooting up here, very, very sharp upward trend. Condition B, we have a very sharp downward trend. But our level says typical performance has increased in condition B. Got to be careful with level about what you're using mean versus median and how you're interpreting that level. That's why you've got to look at the whole picture of this trend A to B. And A, that performance, that response measure is shooting up, whereas in B, it's going down. Level is telling a different story. Got to be smart with visual analysis. Okay, take your time when doing that visual analysis so we get the whole picture. Now, another example during baseline, a child, his peers, an average of seven times per day. After intervention, level drops to two. So again, typical performance, a child hits peers seven times per day was the typical on baseline. After intervention, level drops to two. Think of level as a good way to look at your typical performance. Let's use our other strategies and, and analyses to think about increasing or decreasing performance, depending on what kind of level line you're using. So let's move on to trend. And this is probably the most common one. And this is the one you'll probably explain the most to stakeholders. Trend refers to the direction of the data over time. Very easy to understand that idea. Increasing trend behavior is typically increasing. We say typically, obviously, it's going to depend on, you know, what your behaviors are, right? But typically, increasing is behavior is going up, decreasing behavior is going down. No trend behavior is stable. Now, in baseline, often we are looking for that stable baseline. When we move to intervention, we want to see a trend one way or the other. Direction of the trend should be interpreted as good or bad relative to your goals. If your goal is to decline behavior, a decreasing trend is good. If you want to increase behavior, a decreasing trend is bad. Always got to remember what's the goal. So if we look at some of these examples over here. If we look at A, for example, it's very flat. Okay. If we look at B, again, no real trend. If you think about it, also pretty flat. Getting the C and D, we start to have these upward trends, right? Upward, upward. E and F, we've got these downward trends. And then G, up to down. H, really no real trend at all, all over the place. Trend, not too difficult to assess, right? But you want to be careful about something like B, where if you really want to look hard, you could argue that this is decreasing, when in reality, it's very, very variable, which we're going to talk about next. And trend is just not really there, maybe slightly lower, but not all that much. For example, your goal is to increase task completion related to math problems across 10 sessions. Data path steadily moves upwards, indicating task completions increasing. That brings us to variability. Describes how much the data fluctuates across sessions. So low variability is consistent responding. If we look at A, very consistent. If we look at C, very consistent. E, very consistent. High variability, kind of unstable. If we look at D, kind of all over the map, F, all over the map, B, quite variable, right? If we go from our lowest to our highest data point, there's a big gap between these. Whereas if we look at C, that gap is much smaller. And baseline, we typically want low or no variability before moving to intervention. High variability makes it difficult to draw conclusions about the intervention. For D, yes, we've got an upward trend, but it's quite variable. So what does that mean with these inconsistent responses, but we're still moving upwards, as opposed to C, very consistent responding, E, very consistent responding. Example of the first day, a learner is aggressive 10 times, 3 times, 22 times. That would be pretty variable if we were to map that out. So finally, when interpreting graph data across conditions, let's look for level, trend, and variability changes at the phase line. So when we change, right, we change conditions or phases here, what are we doing once we change that condition? How do we change? How does the data, how do the data change? Data overlap between phases, minus, less overlap equals stronger effects. So if our data 
we change phases or conditions and the data look the same, not a very strong effect, right? Immediate changes suggest maybe a stronger functional control. So for example, behavior drops immediately after introducing reinforcement indicates a stronger functional relationship. If I have a baseline A where my behavior is like this and then steadies out and then I introduce my intervention and immediately it does this, that's a better indicator of a pretty good functional relationship given there's no confounds or extraneous variables. So use graph data to your advantage. It's a great way to communicate to stakeholders. They like seeing graphs. It's easy for them to interpret. That makes them feel a no. And remember what we're looking for and when to use what, right? When to use level, when to use trend, when to use trend, when to use variability. As always, subscribe if you aren't already. We really appreciate it. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.